here's a quick overview of my setup. I know it's not a technical drawing for those of you who are avid electricians. It's connected to the fuse of 250 amps. Uh, then there's a battery switch. I have wires running up there. There's a hole. These are my light switches right now. They're all wired, but I have no walls yet. Is working. Hello, I'm Yulia. I'm a life coach and I travel in my van to go to nature. Right now I'm in Oregon. I bought my Sprinter van two years ago. Past year was hard. Many promises were broken and I thought about selling the van a lot. But nature is a big part of my life and van is the best way to get there. And I realized that by building out the van I can rebuild myself. I can take back the power and rebuild trust within me. I have been converting my van slowly. Fear and doubt come up and I give them space. Once I learn to trust myself, the invisible forces sent unexpected help. But that's a story for another day. I've never done electrical work before. I learned it as I went through the process. I've been making trips in my incomplete van and on my last journey it was great to charge from solar and have a working fridge, lights and fan. I have 400 amp hours of lithium battery bank, 350 watt solar panels, 50 amp DC to DC charge controller will be connecting to the alternator, my fridge, bed, fan and lights are working and I'll install my 3000 watt inverter on the shelf above and promise all wires will be organized. Here's what I learned and wish I knew when I got started. The most difficult part is actually happening at the beginning. You have to figure out your battery bank situation, your solar, how you're gonna mount the solar, how much power do you need. Those are some thick, thick wires. Like, look at the size of this wire. It doesn't cut easily, it doesn't bend easily, and it's very intimidating for someone who had never dealt with any sort of wires or has done any electrical work. My friends are amazing because they believed in me before I believed in myself. And they told me, Yulia, you can do this. I have a couple of friends who build vans and they told me, you, you, you're gonna figure it out, don't worry, just, just stay with it. And I was like, well, if they believe in me, why don't I believe in myself? I had to just basically, you know, do one thing at a time and then tell myself to stop and go do something else so that my head doesn't explode, so I don't get too stressed out, too overwhelmed, too scared, and then quit. So I encourage you to just know, like, the electrical part, at least in the van conversion, the hardest part is up front. And I promise you that if you can just work through those first few days, weeks of mental pressure, of thinking this is way too difficult, I am over my head and all of this. If you can just manage and pace yourself and take mental breaks, you can do it write out your appliances and the whole list of everything that you're gonna have in your van add the fixed appliances so like things that are gonna go like fan and fridge they're like permanently in the van and then maybe appliances that you're gonna be plugging in what i found it to be helpful is writing down what fuse that appliance will need if it doesn't have a built-in fuse and also what uh, gauge wire gauge is recommended per manufacturer uh, manual once you have a list and you know what wire what um, gauge of wire you need and what fuse you need you can buy all those fuses uh, for DC block you could just buy a set of different sizes of fuses and then there's also 
these types of fuses they're called ANL fuses so you'll need to figure out what you need for your setup let me show you guys what I mean like this is a DC fuse block I'm just gently removing it because there's power in there so the second one is the fridge and then the third the fourth one down is a bed so you can see how it's connected so you see those red wires right there so both my bed and my fridge are using 15 amp fuse and then on the um on the left side you could see a bunch of twos those black fuses with two on them those are all lights when you write out a list of all of your appliances uh, all of your devices in the van just kind of make a note are those going to be DC or AC and I typically like I would recommend maximizing DC so DC lights DC fridge DC stove as much as possible because AC will draw much more power plus if you're using the inverter inverter itself will consume about 10% of power just to run and typically AC appliances really use up a lot and so DC fridges are expensive but they're worth it because in the long run like um, in my first converter van we had a an AC fridge and we were constantly running out of power because the fridge was so cute like we wanted the cutest fridge there's definitely more choices with AC devices than DC but it just was constantly running out of power and it's not worth it like when you're on the road you want a super efficient fridge that takes power directly from the battery and no issues use a battery switch i have a battery switch right here i'm also using a switch for my solar as well i put a battery switch because I honestly I was I was a little afraid to work with the battery so I wanted to have a switch to know that I could just stop the current from running and I will not shock myself I will not get electrocuted or anything like that and plus I think it's so much easier to uh, for maintenance purposes to just shut off any connection to the battery use a positive and negative bus bar I was kind of debating on whether or not to use it because I mean it's a small space and I wanted to save as much space as possible I'm so happy that I did because what I ended up doing is the battery itself is on the switch and then it's connected to the positive bus bar and the negative bus bar the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the negative bus bar and basically like I have all terminals are organized like all wires are organized so I don't have like three four five wires sitting on the terminal which you know they don't recommend more than three anyway but it just feels like really nice clean organized and also very safe because the buzz bars are covered and I got like little silicone coverings for my terminal um, the bolts I'm gonna be connecting my battery to the alternator so the battery can be uh, charged while I'm driving and I actually added a solar switch because on the cloudy day if I'm driving a long distance I want to be able to charge my batteries fully from the alternator only because the way that DC to DC charge controller Renogy charge controller works is it takes a maximum of 50 amps it's a the one that I have is 50 amp so it draws 25 amps from solar and 25 amps from alternator and it's always doing half and half even if it's a cloudy day or night time and nothing is coming from solar the maximum it's going to take from the alternator is 25 amps but I figured if my battery is really low and I need to charge quickly I can put a 
switch for my solar actually switch off my panels and then actually DC to DC charge controller is going to take full power full 50 amps from the alternator so I'm excited to learn how that's gonna work I'm not connected to the alternator yet but per manufacturer brochure that's what I read <laughs> I'll let you guys know if I test it and it doesn't prove to be true now with the two switches I always have to turn off my solar panels first disconnect them and then turn off the power to the battery as well while I'm talking about the battery and you know just like all of these things that are sitting in this cabinet here I want to talk about EMF exposure I've talked about EMF in multiple videos and I want to stress it here one more time please keep your electrical setup away from your bed and away from the area where you spend the most time if you look at how the battery actually works one there are chemical reactions happening and even though the batteries nowadays especially lithium are super safe super well contained you you know you're not really getting any off gassing or anything like that I'm still skeptical about I mean it's it's crazy right like this is a power bank that holds all these chemical reactions and then as a result of chemical reactions there are these electromagnetic fields that are being created and when there is an electromagnetic field it interferes with the electromagnetic field of your body your heart all of your different organs your body as a human being and I don't want to get into all the details I just want you to do your own research and I want to encourage you to think and just be safe the battery monitor um, I chose again because of EMF exposure I don't want to have Bluetooth uh, like permanently activated <laughs> in my van whether it's B21 uh, like the Renogy has this wireless connection to the battery or uh, Renogy also produces a lot of uh, batteries that have Bluetooth they're Bluetooth enabled and activated and you can't turn them off it's like part of the battery and I did not want that <laughs> and some of you may be like wow that's convenient to have a Bluetooth activation and for me it's costing me my health because I do know when Wi-Fi is on when Bluetooth is on I definitely don't feel my best and so it's just not worth it for me I'm old-fashioned I'd rather use a wired mouse or a wired monitor than a wireless monitor or a Bluetooth that I cannot turn off anytime when you have switches or fuses you could just remember they're always sitting on the positive side well so the the current flows from the positive from the positive terminal of the battery and returning back to the negative right so it's powering up all of the devices along the circuit and it's returning back to negative if your power is way more like amperage that's the current that's running through is too much more than the wire can handle more than the device can handle it's better for it to like ruin the little fuse right because then I can take the fuse and just replace it from the DC and and those fuses are so cheap they're like a few cents each um, those types of fuses I mean ANL fuses are a little bit more expensive they're maybe like ten dollars twenty dollars but still it's a lot cheaper than replacing the whole device so sort of switch is your voluntary when you turn off the circuit you're not you don't want any power running through the circuit the fuse is sort of the involuntary switch right like when the power is too much it's just gonna switch off the power in that circuit okay another thing where people sometimes get hang up is the gauge the wire gauge and to be honest I was there too like I was like okay should I use 14 gauge or 10 
or four, check the manual. I know some people don't like to read manuals, but manuals are amazing because they will literally tell you what fuse you need. Good manuals will tell you what fuse you need, what gauge wiring you need uh, as, a, as a minimum. And so you can just like read it in a manual and use that. So for a lot of things in my van, like for lights, LED lights, I'm just using uh, gauge 16. Uh, and then I use 14 for a lot of appliances. Um, I use, I'm using 10 for my bed. Uh, yeah, 14 for my fan, 10 for my fridge and my from, for my bed. And I'm using four gauge for the uh for the alternator and for dc to dc charge controller and i'm using two slash o wire for connecting the battery to the positive and negative um, bus bars and then i'm also going to use two slash o this this really thick wire for connecting to my alternator <laughs> i've like i've looked at so many blogs where people are discussing what gauge they should use for that or this and i i was just like it's a really small space especially when you're working on a small van conversion over wiring is okay if you're having doubts go with the thicker wire it's not gonna make a ton of difference in terms of price but you will be safe label all your wires you could see I have all these labels right here, bedroom lights, for example, this one says. Um, and then behind me, all of those, like uh, right up there, all of those wires are all, every single one of them is labeled. And the way that I was doing it is I would run a wire and label the beginning and the end of it. And I, I kind of also recommend, you know, instead of just putting like dining lights, you could put dining lights to switch, dining switch to power or battery or something like that. So like you kind of know which is which, like label and write as much detail as you need so you don't get confused. Because once there's so many wires, you will start losing track which one is which. Also for wiring, I use tubing and I, I am really happy that I did. It just kept my, it keeps my wires organized in the ceiling. Uh, I'm also going to do it um, in the walls, like where it's needed and where it's necessary. It's like all wires are in one place. I know exactly where they are. Um, so I won't necessarily like drill a hole or something in there, but also most of all, it's just like, I really like that it's so organized and they're all together and they look great another tip i can give you is connect one thing at a time and test it and honestly that's why i love that i have the switch the battery switch so i can like switch things off connect one more thing switch things on test that thing heat gun what an investment i honestly feel like i'm so happy that I, I i was kind of going back and forth should i buy a heat gun i don't need i don't need one heat gun just gives you a consistent beautiful experience makes things easy uh you're not wasting matches it's much easier like if you're working by yourself like you don't have to hold a light you know candle lighter in one hand or a match in one hand and then try to do something with one hand like with the heat gun i just like put it on the bench and then i had both hands to kind of manipulate the wire and it was just it saved me a ton of time it made my work really beautiful and consistent and it was honestly one of the best 30 dollars that i've spent super worth the investment and the best part is like the next week after I bought it, I realized like I can use it in my garden. I needed to fix, fix up my watering system in the garden, so I used it there. Then I was like, oh, I wish I had it when I was refinishing my shower and bathtub like 
to get the bubbles out um it is it's crazy like i i think you're gonna come up with uses for it once you have your heat gun so here's a quick overview of my setup by the way right now all these wires are not really organized i will organize them and i'm going to have a shelf right here with my inverter sitting on top of it like so and so all of these wires are going to be all around organized and trimmed so it's not going to be like a mess like this you're just sort of witnessing it in the middle of a project but I wanted to go on the trip I got you know my fridge is working my lights are working my fan my bed so I wanted to connect all of that and um, my solar are charging my battery right now here's my setup I know it's not a technical drawing for those of you who are avid electricians but it helped me to understand the different parts of my system and also I kind of put red and black wires so I know where it's at, um, what different gauges, wires I need, and where I need fuses. So um, my house battery is there. I didn't update it. I, I originally was going to do negative bus bar but no positive bus bar but I ended up using both and I'm so happy that I did. You can see I have a positive bus bar right here but essentially my battery goes um, is connected to the fuse of 250 amps uh, then there's a battery switch and that goes to the positive bus bar and in the positive bus bar um, is actually connected to the DC to DC charge controller um, it's also going to be connected to the inverter and it's Currently, let's see what else is con connected to it and DC to DC um, block, fuse block. On the negative side, my negative terminal of the battery is connected to battery shunt because I have a battery monitor and um, also a negative bus bar right there. Negative bus bar is connected also to DC to DC block. Um, it's connected to the ground back there and it's also connected to DC to DC charge controller it goes from solar which is up on the roof right like I have wires running up there there is a hole um, and I'll show you from the roof and the wires are traveling this way and then they're connected to the switch uh, the positive side is connected to the switch and then from there it's connected to DC to DC um, charge controller and then I will have a shelf here with my inverter so all of my AC loads is going to go through the inverter because right now it looks a little messy but it will look really nice <laughs> once I organize all of my wires and add the shelf with the inverter my fridge is working you can kind of hear it right now I have some things in here but there you go <laughs> it's working there's a light I have a freezer my my fan is working turn it off so it's not loud I also built this bed and it is on the switch right here so these are my temporary switches um, this one is my bed up down switch and then these are my light switches right now they're all wired but I have no walls yet so can't mount what well, cabinets I can't mount it but you could see this one I labeled this is dining and then I have living room and then I have a bedroom so um, they are working if I turn it on those are the lights right there okay and then this is the switch
my bed is going down. I've been in my head for the past probably a couple of weeks learning trying to learn all about electricity and figure out the wiring and I what I learned is that a lot of my mental pressure actually did not come from the difficulty of learning about electricity or physics because honestly it's pure math calculation like you can figure out these amps and fuses that you need and all of that like you could do research and figure it out where my mental pressure came from is from these subconscious beliefs which i started like identifying like i'm a woman i'm not supposed to be doing this it's um dangerous to play with electricity like that's what my subconscious mind believes but my conscious mind doesn't believe that like i don't believe that a woman cannot do things that a man can do for example I'm just, I, my conscious mind <laughs> totally laughs at that but it's so deep within that it keeps coming up as a fear especially when like when i'm going through fear and doubt that's when that ancient brain gets activated and i just like slip into that subconscious uh limiting belief and that's what i started noticing so i'm just so thankful for having uh friends that can validate me that can double check my work can look at it and tell me that i'm not crazy and tell me that i've done my homework that it all looks good um, I will do another video on my solar setup. I have a DIY solar panel <laughs> kind of installation. I didn't want to spend three or five thousand dollars on having a roof rack and for the panels to be mounted to. I really didn't have that money in the budget, but also I didn't want to use those um, Strut channels. I, I can't remember the name for those, but yeah. I came up with my own system <laughs> so I'll make a video about that and I've tested it going like 80 miles per hour 85 even with like a 25 mile per hour wind <laughs> and my panels did not fly away they're securely mounted uh, none of the bolts are loose they're looking great so my my system works uh i was told by like five different men in home depot stores that what i had in mind is not possible and then i made it actually possible so i'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> thank you guys for watching i hope you found it to be helpful and useful and good luck with your project um, you can do it don't get overwhelmed if you start feeling overwhelmed take a break go get ice cream or a piece of pie go to the beach or to a forest and just kind of chill relax let your nervous system calm down and then you can come back to it and you're gonna get it done I promise because if I can do it you can do it and honestly it's it's just gonna take a little bit of time to learn uh, these things and then to practice like, let me know if these videos are useful or if you want more of like step by step it's difficult to record when I'm actually building to be honest when I'm working uh, like being all sweaty and dirty and dusty I, I, it's not the time I want to show my face in the camera and explain things to you guys <laughs> it's just like sometimes I'm also really stressed and I'm um, like I really admire YouTubers that do it in the moment when you're trying to do it yourself and record and build and get all sweaty and research. <laughs> Whoever you are, if you're doing that, I uh, just so much respect and so much love and admiration to you for doing that. All right, big hugs, you guys. Happy summer. Enjoy your vacation or your projects whatever it is that you're doing and i'll see you soon subscribe please subscribe i recently relaunched my youtube channel and i'm still trying to figure out the content so please subscribe it would really help me and support me and encourage me to make more videos for you guys bye